All right, hello. So I'll be going over the new features that you should know in PHP 8. The first thing I'll go over is the types. Some new types and new ways to use types in version 8. Before, in previous versions, you've been able to use just one type. For instance, in this class multiplier, you can have these be integer types with just int. But let's say you want it to also be a float. You could do or float, union float. And so now this primary variable can be either an integer or a float. And it can be same with all of these parameters. You know, that could be a float, this could be a float, and it could even uh, union return a float, be integer or float. That's the new union types in version eight. A new type that's been added in is called the mixed type. Let's say you have this string helper class and there's the function concat and so this takes a variable called end, and if it's null, then return the variable. If it's an array, return the variable. But then if it's a string, concat the start variable, which has been declared up here, and maybe just initialized in the constructor, and then append the parameter that's been passed in. So return that, and then if it's not a string, then just return null. So the way you can use the mixed type is and this parameter, let's say you want the parameter to be, it could be an array, or it could be null, it could be a string, maybe it could even be an int or float, it could be a bunch of things. So you could use the mixed type. When you're returning the type, so let's say you don't know what it's, the type is going to be, so you add this mixed type. And you do not need to use the question mark to say that it could be null, since mixed already defines that it could be null, you don't need to add the question mark in. That's just another type that's been added into PHP 8, and I think that could be really useful. Another thing that's been added in is something called property promotion. This is how you would normally have a class with the variables up here, the constructor, the getters, and then you might have setters or whatever. And then you know you pass the variables into the parameters and then you set them in your constructor. Well, with property promotion, you can get rid of the initialization of the variables up there, and you can get rid of where you actually define the variables and set the value right here. So you can just have this empty constructor to actually initialize these variables that you pass into the constructor. All you have to do is if it's a private variable, then you just add private here. If it's public, then you add public. And then it's automatically assigned whatever value that you pass in. And then something else to go along with this is let's say you want to create a new object. So you do new and then book. And then so normally you would have to type in the title. You can see that pages is next. So you might have 300 pages. Well, let's say you want these out of order. Now what you would do is you would say title and then your title and then but let's say actually you wanted pages to come first so you do pages like 150 or something like that so that's called a uh, named arguments and that's another new thing a final minor thing to do with types is the new stringable type any class that implements the two string method will also be considered a stringable type some new string functions have been in, have been added into PHP 8. So you have string contains, so str underscore contains, and then you have your haystack, and then you put in the needle. And this sees if a if the string, which is like a you know hello world or something. So let's say this is hello world. If this contains world, this is case sensitive this would return true. And then you also have string starts, whoops, starts with, and also string ends with. And this is just the same way, you know, you enter the string that you want to search, so hello world, and then see if it ends with something or starts with something, so hello. And same with the string ends with. Null safe is another useful addition so let's say you have the author variable and you have a post object and you can get author like that. And then let's say you want to get the author's username. And to do that, you would call the get username function. 
the thing about this is this might be null. In previous versions, you do username, author, and then a ternary operator, author get username. And then if it is null, then just return null. This assigns username for the get username method. If this author variable is not null, if it is null, then just also assign username to null. Well, now with the null safe operator, you can do username is equal to post and then get author. And then you add the null safe, which is just a question mark. And then you call the next method, which is just get username. If author is null, then username will be assigned null. If it's not null, it'll continue on to the next method, which is get username. And then if get username is null, then it'll also assign this to null. If it's not null, then it'll be assigned a string. You don't need to have this ternary operator anymore. You can use this null safe instead. Next is the new match expression. This improves the switch statement quite a bit. So this is similar to Rust. If you use Rust, it's similar to the match expression in Rust too. You pass in a parameter, whatever variable it is. In this, it's slash example. And then you have, just like a switch, you have several options like slash example, slash about, slash login. Whichever one of these is a match, then this value gets returned. And it has to have a default value or it has to match one of the values or it'll throw a error. But you can also have multiple options. For instance, you can see this is wrong password or username not found, you just have a comma. It could be, you know, wrong username is passed in or user not found is passed in and it'll both give wrong credentials. This, these don't have to be strings. These can be any sorts of values. In previous versions, there hasn't been a defined way to have attributes on methods. Many frameworks would define attributes in the doc type, just like this. So you would have a route right here, and then you would define it in the doc type. Well, now there's a official way to have attributes. You have two of these carrots, and then whatever the attribute is. In this case, it would be route, and then the route, like that, and then you end it with two carrots like that. And then to actually access this attribute, you would use the reflector class. You would define your reflector variable is equal to new reflection class, and then whatever the class that you want to access the attribute is. So in this case, it's example controller. So you do example controller, and then colon colon class. And then to actually get the attributes, you would use reflector get attributes. And this is, whoops, this has already been, the, uh, the reflection class is already used. You might have already used this in previous versions. I'm pretty bad at spelling today, but I think you get the idea. All right, so now I'll go over some miscellaneous stuff. The first thing is if you're using any of the preg functions, there's now preg underscore last underscore error underscore message. This is a much more human readable version of the current function of, you know, preg last error. So this just returns an error code. If you want something more human readable, then you would add underscore MSG to see the human readable version of that instead of, you know, having to look up the error codes. Another thing is, let's say you have a user class that's use app entity user. So, you know, it's just like entity user and your, you know, namespace in this namespace. Let's say you assign user is equal to this uh, user class. And then previously you would have to use get class and then the object. So this is now equal to just doing user and then you can just use the class syntax directly on it. You know, this might just cut down on having to use the get class. That might be useful if you're using, if you have to do, you know, check if it's, an, if it's from the namespace or if it's from the class, whatever. Another thing is if you're using catch, try, catch, you no longer have to use the, let's just look at how it is now. So you'd have try and then you would catch the exception. 
and then the you would put the exception in this variable that you can use. So you now no longer have to give a variable. You can just catch the exception and then do nothing, or you just don't have to assign it. The final thing that I'll go over is, let's say you have a class, let's just say it's example, and then you have like a method called public function run. There's a static type that you can return, whoops, and then this, you can just return the new static. And so this just returns the static instance of the example class. I hope this was useful. This is like my only second to the tutorial. Hopefully these will get more smooth and let me know if I made any mistakes. Hopefully I didn't, but if I did, let me know in the comments and I will try to update the video. Thank you.